Hi, we're at the India Mobile Congress and today we have with us Dr. Rishi Mohan Bhatnagar from Aries Communications. Hi sir, it's a pleasure to have you here with us. Your company has just partnered with BSNL for IoT. Why don't you tell us more about it? Yeah. So uh, Tina, I'd like to tell you more about start with what Internet of Thing is, okay, and how this technology can work and how it technology can take it forward. Okay. So you know when God made human talks to human. Okay. Then the next step came when the machines and human can start talking to each other. When we can switch on an AC, we can switch on a, a you know TV, and we can do many things. And you know we can talk to machines, and we can. Now we are getting into a stage when the internet will start making machines talk to machines. Okay. And that's the next level. And once you'll start collecting data coming from these machines, we'll be able to see certain kind of you know the solutions which you can work on. And having analytics yeah. is what you can get into the Internet of Things space. When we talk about this technology and we start thinking about these technologies, the first thing which comes to many of the urban class uh, individuals, irrespective of which part of the world they are in, we think about a connected car. When the car having messages sent, car talking to the cars, car saying, okay, I, I got accident, please come and help me, and all those kind of things. And this is one of the use cases, okay. But when you start thinking about a security camera telling there is a theft happening, a security camera saying there is an illegal occupation happening, or somebody is trying to rob a car, or somebody is trying to steal something, okay. That's the way it can provide major security, okay. Similarly, when a, when a grid gets smarter and say, I got this much energy, and I've been transmitting only this much, and the meter in a house or a factory will be able to say, this is what is the generation, this is what I received, but this is what I'm paying for, okay. We'll have a drastic, revolutionary, transformational changes in the way we can think. Yeah. Just in the case of power industry, I just heard from somebody that, you know, there is a 30 to 40 percent transmission and distribution losses in India. Mm -hmm. If I can make a meter smarter, and if I can make the grid smarter, Okay, we might be in a position to bring those losses from currently 30 to 40 percent to 8 to 10 percent. That means without having another power plant being manufactured, you know, started and investing on that, we'll be able to start generating, or I'm using the word saving, 30 percent additional power which has already been produced but could not be consumed. This is what Internet of Thing is. So we can start thinking of many use cases in terms of security, smart cities, digital, you know, the healthcare sector, transportation, and many more. We have a technology which will be able to provide and manage this connectivity to these machines. We'll be able to manage these devices. We'll be able to get collect all the data coming from these machines and these devices on our data platform. And we'll be in a position to create solutions on top of it and do analytics. So we are the we are an organization which has an end-to-end -end technology to manage this Internet of Things. So for in India, okay, uh, what we require is a connectivity provider yeah. who has access to the masses, mm -hmm. and where we will be in a position to put our platform and along with our partners on solutions, we can deploy these solutions and uh, you know provide the IoT services in India. Now coming to BSNL. BSNL, in addition to being an operator, which is supposed to generate revenue and profit, mm -hmm. being a public sector organization, it also has certain social obligations. Okay. Those social obligations forces them to create mobile towers in the next light set areas. Yes. It makes them force them, or you know, it's an obligation to provide connectivity in the far northeast. Okay. Out of the 100,000 gram panchayats, as a first phase of completion of the Bharat Net project, where the optical fiber has been laid out for the gram panchayats, out of the 100,000 completed, 85% has been done by BSNL. So for a company like Aries, to reach to the rural market or to the public sector, where the government is the major in investor. So for a company like Aries, if you start thinking, which is the largest enterprise in this country? The largest enterprise in this country is government. Okay, and right now, government has started thinking how will they manage and provide better services to their customers who are the citizens. So whether it's healthcare, whether it's transportation, whether it's education, whether it's 
Ganga rejuvenation or anything. Government is investing and trying to see how can they reach to the masses. Okay. And that this technology along with BSNL will really help the public sector and the government to reach to the masses much faster mm -hmm. and more efficiently. So for us, definitely it's a business. We are a business, you know, um, commercial organization. Okay, but how can we reach to the masses in India? And with the support of BSNL, definitely our technology will help them in taking all these solutions to the masses. Are you also exploring partnerships with other telcos or other? We are already partnered with other telcos. And our technology is a very unique combination of the end-to-end -end stack for IoT together, mm -hmm. integrated, which is making us uh, much more attractive to the operators. Mm -hmm. Instead of going with individual platforms for the end-to-end -end IoT stack, we provide an end-to-end -end integrated IoT stack, which is making our positioning much better in the Indian market. And what kind of trends are you seeing generally when it comes to the proliferation of Internet of Things in India? If you are, think about the, uh, you know, how people are adopting Internet of Things, the trends is on the improvement side. Okay? So day before yesterday, I heard the Transportation Ministry is talking about all commercial vehicles having a connectivity, or they should be able to trace them. Which means that each and every truck or any commercial vehicle will have a vehicle telematics device or a device being attached mm -hmm. and all the data should start coming out of it. Right. Okay. This is the internet of things. Yeah. Okay. When the healthcare department says that they will be in a position to move their primary health center into a health clinic and using the Bharatnet uh, fiber optics, we will be able to provide a remote patient monitoring mm -hmm. from a district headquarter hospital to a village, it is internet of things. When the power ministry speaks about pilots on smart meters and smart grids, this is internet of things. Okay. So one thing is, who is the current users? The current major investor and user of this technology is you know, government and because they are supply. So that's the trend and honestly, if the government start pushing, it, the trends get much faster. Yes. Okay. So this is one part. The second part is then the enterprises side. If you start seeing, you know, Germany and the Western countries, they're talking about industry 4.0. How can they modernize their factories? How can they remotely monitor their factories? Our problem in India is a problem of plenty yeah. and less labor cost, young uh, people. Okay. So we are not looking for how can I reduce my cost of delivery because my cost of delivery is slightly cheaper. What we are looking for more efficiency and improving the quality. Okay, that's what we are trying to do. So industry 4.0 implementation, I have worked with a number of big enterprises, which are factories, which have started adopting it, but they still don't know what will be the return on investments. Okay? And that's where they are trying to struggle, whether they should implement or not. But the insurance sector, you know, the traffic, you know, the uh, vehicle insurance has started adopting it in a much faster way. So from the healthcare, education, power, and tra transportation in the government sector and the smart city, the private sector or the enterprises have started implementing in transportation again. Okay. So secondly, in the fleet management, insurance sector, financing, uh, you know, when you're financing a vehicle, all these sectors have started using these technologies to see how can they implement. You know, the big hospitals are already using remote patient monitoring and remotely monitoring, so I don't want to say that they are now adopting. But the trends are, because of the so much of push for Digital India, smart cities, and many others, and I want to give you a figure, 60 to 65 percent of the startups in India are working on Internet of Things. Okay? But it's a very big number. You know, if you think about jobs, the Internet of Things are expected to generate huge amount of jobs in India because we are trying to uh, combine the manufacturing with connectivity to system integration and technology, IT technology. When we are combining all of these together, we need a different kind of program manager. We need a different kind of developer. We, different, we need a different kind of managed service operations. You know, if you think about a call center okay, for a telecom operator, the first thing they'll ask, what is your number? But the number is with a car or with a meter or with a healthcare device. Yes. That means you will require a different kind of managed services operations, which will require deployment of devices, field operations, L1, L2, L3 support. 
so there's a need of a different kind of skill set required okay which will generate huge amount of jobs okay so this internet of things one side definitely it will reduce certain jobs but it will increase so many other jobs which are required for the future and i'm not only talking about india the whole world is looking for such kind of specialist who can work on program managing the internet of things solutions developing and de internet of things solutions and provide the managed services for an end to end iot solution i'm not talking about a mobile app solution i'm not talking about a connectivity solution i'm not talking about a hardware device which generates data i'm talking about all three of them joined together to provide a service to the end customer recently the it minister had announced that they will be coming up with a new iot policy so what are your expectations from this policy and what kind of things can the policy take care of certain aspects that it can have so you know around 2 3 years back i was also there and they were we were trying to see what should be the iot policy my thought is you know once the technology gets mature then then you have to regulate and see what can what is not required to be done what is required to be done but once the technology and the new thing is trying to mature you need to provide a policy which will help in accelerating the opportunity you know the growth and mature um, maturing that particular technology okay so my main one expectation from the policy makers and i may i personally know many of them and i participate in them is to see what kind of stimulus they can make bring by by, by that policy so that the adoption of iot can be much faster because once we really like to uh, you know the technology needs are not only for our automation the technology needs are also for providing services to the masses 1.25 billion people if needs to be provided healthcare services we are short of somewhere around say 2 million plus doctors if you really want to provide for 1.25 billion people healthcare services the only way with the current set of uh, doctors and paramedical staff available is to provide a remote patient monitoring and that's a technology adoption so how can you help in adopting these technology faster is what is required another thought you know i am not sure you know whether this is a right forum to say these are things or not if you start thinking you know when i make a call and i am using a mobile phone the kind of data i use the amount of voice i use has a certain arcos now think of a car sending one sms a day or one sms an hour that means they won't be requiring a gb of data they it will be kbs of data that means the utilization of network will increase but the per device data usage will be very low can we start reducing the licensing fee for m to m kind of services okay will it help and attract the operators to sell that more okay yeah. these are the kind of things which might be required to stimulate to provide that stimulus that is required for the internet thing industry to grow you know for you know adopting these kind of things can we give certain incentives if the policies will help that it will definitely be an you know encouragement for the industry if not then it will be a hindrance all right sir and this will be my concluding question so um, going forward what percentage of revenue can uh, iot related services contribute to telcos see i can talk more in terms of the western world where it has already implemented implementing and getting slightly more mature than what we are seeing it right now in india in some of the big uh, com com uh, telecom operators it has grown to around 15% okay and 15% to you know in uh, you know it's not a old technology mm -hmm. so that means it won't take a 100% definitely definitely there will be data there will be voice and many other services which the operators provide mm -hmm. but it can go to a level when it can reach 15 to 20% of the total revenue which is a much more profitable one as a okay thank you thank, thank you very you much sir. thank you so much thank you thank you yeah um, thank you Keep watching this space for regular telecom investors. Thank you, sir.